All right, we're on. A, we're on. Hello, everyone. This is Kathleen Girani with Autism Brainstorm, www.autismbrainstorm.org. And this evening, we are having a very special segment of Where in the World is Dr. Stephen Shore? And Dr. Stephen Shore is liable to be anywhere in the world, but always improving life for people on the autism spectrum, one trip at a time. Hi, Stephen. Hi, hi, Kathleen. It's <laughs> You're to joining you. us from the um, Autism Speaks National Conference. That's right. We're here in mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio, and we had a rousing conference today. It uh -huh. was great. And you have some wonderful friends with you tonight. I certainly do. Uh, met, got some newfound friends here, and met some older friends, and we're all just having a great old time. Fantastic. Do you just want to go around the circle and, and, and let them introduce themselves? I sure will. Great. So, starting with Kamina. Hi, I'm Kamina. Stephen Hi, Kamina. We found conference buddies. I'm from <laughs> Children's Hospital, Los Angeles. I'm the parent partner there for the Autism Speaks uh, clinic, uh, ATA clinic there, the Boone Fetter Clinic. Very good. Thank you. All right. And we have... <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Amy Hess and I'm the ATN site coordinator at Nationwide Children's Hospital. And I'm also a parent of a child with autism and it's great to be here tonight. Wonderful, thank you. Continuing on. Hi. Hello. And I'm a mom of a daughter with autism and two typical boys. And I'm also the ATN national co-chair, family co-chair. And this is my parent, Chris, who has a son with autism and two typical boys. Welcome. Thank you for participating in this Google Hangout. Hello. I'm Tom. Hello. I am the co-chair for the Family Advisory Committee as well. The other co-chair. Uh, I also am the father of my son, 13, Henry, who has autism. Thank you for being there tonight. You're welcome. Thank you so much for participating. All right. And, uh, here we are. Okay, so let's hit the highlights of the conference so far, Stephen. All right, so I'm going to talk about the highlight, highlights, and uh, anyone who has anything to interject, uh, feel free to uh, uh, feel free to interject what mm -hmm. needs to be said. So let the fun begin. <laughs> okay, you were the keynote speaker, correct? Well, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Are you still there? Yes, yes. Um, so your your uh, your topic was the self excuse me the steps to self advocacy. Is that correct? Uh, that was one of my topics. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked about building a successful life for individuals on the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. and one of the areas I covered was the three steps to self advocacy. Okay. Namely, that uh, being able to identify when a challenge occurs, then being able to uh, uh, advocate for yourself in a way that another person can understand and provide support, mm -hmm. and then moving on to giving the reason why, and that's the disclosure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very important steps. Um, I, I hear there are a lot of children there. That's. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, they have a special room for the children where they provide the Oh, that's right. And things like that. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, what it was is that there was a special room uh -huh. uh, for children on the autism spectrum, uh, games and other things uh, that they would enjoy. Well, that's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's a so it's a full inclusion sort of an event. Lots yeah, of family yeah. and kids. Yeah. Yeah, we were all here, and we're all here for individuals on the autism spectrum. Otherwise, Autism Speaks and other organizations wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So, um, other than you, wh who were the other presenters for the conference? Uh, well, some of the other presenters included, included Peter Gerhardt, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Susan Sweeto, and there were a number Paul of them. Right? Paul Carbone. <laughs> Paul Carbone mm -hmm. was here. Mm -hmm. There was uh, Susan. Well, oh, got Susan Sweeto. Susan Sweeto, you got her. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we had our parent presenters. Um, and there were parent presenters as well. Uh, so the, the lady that you just that just introduced herself. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Right. Right. University well, that's okay. Do you want to tell us about the parent presenters? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can chime right in. Thank you. Yes. That um, one of the benefits that we have being here in Columbus, Ohio, and having the uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital parents be a part of it is we have a lot of our uh, care partners that get to actually be presenters. Um, mm -hmm. We have um, Carla Garcia Diaz, which is my parent partner from CHLA. She's my other half. Um, and she actually spoke about her with her daughter, who is seven. Um, so, uh, you know, the younger kids, and they get to talk about you know, just what the, the quality of life and different things that may be important um, to mm -hmm. creating a life for their children. Um, and then Amy chimed in, I think, um, transitioning into middle school with mm -hmm. her son. And so uh, that gave us what he was going to do fifth and sixth grade and they even talked about you know finding out what vocational skills he had to mm -hmm. be able to move on to you know even later on in his life and then we had Marianne Sullivan who has been a from what I hear she is the autism speaks guru of forever yeah <laughs> I wish I haven't been around that long but she's you know Marianne Sullivan took us uh, with her son Hunter all the way up until um, adulthood Mm -hmm. And then after that, we had Peter Gerhardt. So we had a really good um, smattering and a really good uh, timeline of parents who could give you a personal accounting and then also a professional accounting of their lives with their children and giving us an, uh, just a really introspective look on the lifespan, which is basically our topic of this conference, mm -hmm. seeing our children as the whole child, but over the lifespan. Mm -hmm. So that was that was really wonderful. Yes, it sounds that way. It sounds sounds very. very it was good. It was nice. Yeah, you had a unique perspective, of parents, um, and as you said, over the lifespan. Was there a representation of um, the vast differences of the, the the wideness, the variety on the spectrum? Was that sort of rep represented as far as? significant challenges and those with um, maybe less significant ones? Oh, of course. All of mm -hmm. our children, of course, you know, the statement is always, if you know one child on the autism spectrum, you know one child on the autism spectrum. Right. And all of us have children on the autism spectrum that are completely different. So mm -hmm. when we represent them, we represent each one of them uh, very specifically um, and also com comorbidities that may exist um, yes. that take effect over that lifespan so we talk about them um, and those comorbidities as it applies to things like medication, GI issues, mm -hmm. emotional health, um, mm -hmm. vocational, <laughs> <laughs> How about spe maybe special interests and abilities as well? Was special that covered? Good. Yeah and that's where Stephen came in um, for my daughter personally, she's 10. Mm -hmm. Um, music is all around us. Music is our, my family, and I'm an entertainer myself, but she's particularly taken a liking to music. So having him there showed me, it gave me um, hope mm -hmm. uh, because her her interests are so specific. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because she's such a musical learner, it kind of gave me, you know, a little bit more. And, and he made us sing, this guy. Nice <laughs> yes, so, he is like that. Yes. So you know, it instantly like made us fall in love with this guy. Like he really like he brought to us what our kids could be when they grow up. If that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yes, so, it like, absolutely does. A glimpse of potential. Yeah. So we're all like happy about it, and we're like all gushing over this guy's presentation. You know, mm -hmm. because we're like, oh my god. And you know, you only hear um, so many times about a Temple Grandin or whatever, but when I actually learned about Stephen, I looked him up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that he was here and that I actually got a chance to meet him. I was looking for different people who were interested, who were on the spectrum, who were interested in something that my daughter was interested in, which was music. Mm -hmm. So um, he popped up on a search yeah. on YouTube, and then I, I found him, and then what was good for me about him as a presenter is he hung out, mm -hmm. he hung out with us, and he gave us a chance to ask him and, and pick his brain about whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can't I can't talk enough about this guy. This guy's great. He's funny. 
Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, we, have a, yeah, we have a good time. So hanging there out. he is. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's hear from somebody else about their experience there at the okay. conference. Chris, Chris is yeah. going to tell us. He's All good. right, he's cool. Chris over, and he's funny as well. He's got quite a sense of humor. So, Chris, uh, you're in the hot seat now. Alrighty. All right. Hi, Chris. Hello. All right. Can you share with us a little bit about your experience there at the conference? Um, I would say one of the best things about me is the way I've been able to apply this conference to my personal life immediately. My son is three and a half years old, high-functioning autism, but I've yet to actually sit down and have that conversation with him to help him understand why he's a little bit different than the other kids. And mm -hmm. thanks to you know the keynote speaker from today, I was actually given some very powerful and valuable tools for the proper way to address that conversation and bring it up in a way that my son would feel empowered instead, yes. Of, yes. Um, mm -hmm. instead of at a disadvantage. So thanks mm -hmm. to that, I'm going to go home and, and start you know, strategizing that conversation to highlight all of his positive attributes and all the things that he excels at that the other children don't to show him how he'll be able to make autism a strength instead of a, a challenge that needs to be overcome. Mm -hmm. So really what we're looking at, and what I focus, uh, one of the things I stressed in my keynote is that we need to consider the strengths of individuals yes. on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So moving away from a disability and deficit model to an abilities-based model. And the abilities-based model, uh, as we look at the strengths and potential of people with autism, it also takes into account that people with autism have some real challenges. And uh -huh. some of them are really significant challenges. Yes. If challenges yes. did not exist, then we wouldn't, be all, we wouldn't be here all trying to figure this out. So mm -hmm. they are there. And we do have to work with them. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we also need to be cognizant of the strengths and abilities. Mm -hmm. Did you have a, an opportunity, Stephen, to get into your comparative approaches philosophy? Uh, no, I didn't. Not really? OK. Mm -hmm. no, I only had 27. Hundred seconds, and, it's really <laughs> and uh, so right. I'm gonna save that maybe for. Uh, well, I'll save that for a future conference. Right. Um, right. The, the idea behind the comparative approaches is that rather than trying to figure out which is the best approach, whether it's ABA, Miller Method, four-time daily life therapy, to each, and so mm -hmm. on, it's really a matter of finding out which approach best meets the needs of the individual. Right. So it's matching practice to individual needs. Mm -hmm. As Kamima mentioned a little bit earlier, when you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Mm -hmm. We're all going to have different needs. Yeah. I had an interesting conversation with our friend Robert Nassif last night, and one thing that came up uh, over and over was that um, the strengths, the this. The, um, the perseverations, if, if you will, the special interests are the window into communication and the window into um, real and meaningful learning. Oh, he's absolutely right. It's the yeah. window to communication. It's the window to developing a relationship with your child. Mm -hmm. And if that means sitting on the floor and stimming and flapping with them until they notice you, then that's what you do. And once you build that connection, mm -hmm. then you can move on to other things. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, wow! I, I think that it's wonderful that you're that you're having the opportunity to present in such varied settings, with lots and lots of different um, groups of people. Uh, you were going to say something. Go ahead, Stephen. Oh, uh, well, just uh, uh, riffing off of what you said, it's, mm -hmm. it's a great honor uh, to be able to come to these different and widely varying organizations, mm -hmm. organizations that are just as diverse as we find people on the autism spectrum, and to be able to find ways to help people better understand those of us with autism, how to better support people with autism, and how we can all work together, whether we're talking about parents, mm -hmm. individuals on the spectrum, uh, therapists, educators, doctors, mm -hmm. other professionals in the community, and making life better for people with autism mm -hmm. and everybody else. And this is a group conversation. This is, this requires everyone's input. It's a collaborative discussion really we're having. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anybody else who would like to share a little bit about their experience? Well, let's see. Uh, let's see. Can we get somebody else? <laughs> Amy or this is great. This is great. 
I'm good. Go to Stephen. Got a rowdy bunch there, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty rowdy bunch. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we've got another person here. All right, that's great. All right, so hi everybody. Hello and welcome. Thank you. So, and, and your name again, please. My name is Amy Hess. H E S S. Amy, would you like to share with us a little bit about your experience there at the conference? You know, it's it's great. I actually work for the Autism Treatment Network. Um, I work at the Nationwide Children's Site here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, it's been great because I, the thing that I like about it is that there's a, a big push for access to care, um, and I think by attending this conference, you have the option, you have the the opportunity to like access a lot of the presenters who are here, who are experts in their field, much like Stephen here, mm -hmm. um, goes into medical care, which is great. So you can talk to people like Margaret Bauman, who you can talk to about GI issues and neurology issues. And so for a lot of families who are searching for you know information about those things, they have access, which is really good here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, very good. So um, what was your, what was your impression of Stephen's uh, keynote? <laughs> He's phenomenal. He actually made a lot of really good points. No, and I'm not saying that because he's sitting next to me. I paid um, the $20. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you know, he made a lot of really good points. I mean, one of the things that he said is, you know, look at the talents of your child and move them in that direction, which I think is so poignant because yes. I think when you first get diagnosed, you try to sort of stay in the mainstream, you know, to some degree. And I think when you start to look at the talents of your child and and, and really fo really focus and develop those, you start to develop this really great person. And he's been fortunate to have that opportunity. And I think it's really good for parents to hear that, so that we start to do that as well. Um, it's interesting because I have a 13-year-old son who has autism, and he loves to kayak and ski and those kinds of things. And it was a long time to get him to learn those things. But mm -hmm. I'm glad we sort of pursued them and really stayed with them because it's given him something that he can do and he can still participate in his community by being involved in those activities. So mm -hmm. I think by pursuing what your child's really good at and not forcing them into a traditional trajectory is, is, mm -hmm. is really very good advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I don't think we can really um, overestimate being happy, happiness, joy. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I think if you're happy in your life, you accomplish a lot. And I think Stephen's a great example of this. I cannot believe what his what his travel schedule is. I'm envious. Oh my gosh, I'm very yes. with the same time because I don't know how he like, keeps his time zone straight. So I don't think he sleeps. I really don't I, think he sleeps. I don't either. I mean, I don't think he's home more than, a, what, a day a week? Well, a day a month, maybe? I don't and, know. It, it varies. It's great. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, I have to say. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. So, um, what are some of the takeaways that you're going to take back from the conference, do you think? You know, we talked a lot about transition, and um, mm -hmm. Stephen talked a lot about that. Peter Gearhart talked a lot about that. I, My son just turned 13, even though I refuse to call him a teenager, he is. Um, so, we're like focusing on that part of his life. Uh -huh. and it, in the initial stages, we were, I know I was very reluctant to get into transition issues, but I think now I'm kind of excited about it because it's, you know, it's, it's planning for a life, it's planning for a career, it's planning for, you know, a future. And I think it's great to be able to do it at the age of 13 so that by the time he gets to 18 and 21 and 25, we've got some really good things going on. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm, I'm excited for it. So mm -hmm. I think I'm taking away that, and I think I'm still taking away the message of, how to access care and how to manage ongoing care and really good effective care. And mm -hmm. if you don't have an answer, looking for an expert who can really help you. Um, so I think those are the, my two biggest messages right now. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to go find another guest for you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Stephen's a rock star. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> well, you like you got another person coming up. Wonderful. So while we're waiting for the next person, it's uh, been a lot of fun at the conference. We just finished a speaker dinner and Lovely. having a rousing good time. Uh -huh. and it looks like we've got Amy here. Amy Kelly. Amy Kelly is here. And okay. Hi, Amy. Amy, here Hi. she is. Amy Kelly. So who are we looking at? Uh, <laughs> Nobody. Um, oh. I'm Kathleen Tirani with Autism Brainstorm, 
And um, hi, and you are a parent of a young person on the spectrum. And would you like to share about your experience there at the conference and what it's meant to you? Sure. Thank you. Um, so yeah, no problem. I'm um, a mom of three kids: um, mm -hmm. Danny, Annie, and Ryan. Danny's twelve. My daughter mm -hmm. Annie, eleven. Ryan's nine. Annie is with autism, ironically. So I have a daughter with autism. I really beat the odds. Mm -hmm. um, no one can figure that one out. We don't have it in our family, so we're not sure where that came from. But um, and Annie was diagnosed about ten years ago. Stephen was one of the first presenters I ever saw. So, okay. Yeah, I've heard him several times. And um, the conference. I'm here on a dual part. I'm here as a parent, but also um, at the ATN Autism Treatment Network. Mm-hmm. Co chair with Tom Hess. Okay. Um, he's my counterpart. That's me. Wait, he's right there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. We're readjusting. Okay. There we go. Now, we getting go. a view from below a little bit. There we go. And this is my second conference. So, mm -hmm. this is, it's the second annual. Um, and I have to say, at each conference, I've learned something new and very powerful. The first one, I was having, so Annie was about 10, and we were having potty training issues still with her. She's nonverbal, needs an iPad, has apraxia, IDD, pretty severe. Um, okay, at what, age, at what age was she diagnosed? She was diagnosed right before she turned two. Two, okay. Two, yeah. Mm -hmm. And... I would say that um, last year's conference provided me with the wherewithal and the knowledge to know what to do about her constipation issues mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. point that we took care of them when I got home. And we learned that they weren't a behavioral thing, but they were actually a physical manifestation of yes. something that was going on with her. Boy, that was life-changing, wasn't it? That Huge. awareness. Huge. Yeah. There's a blog on Autism Speaks website about it. I, mm -hmm. I wrote for them. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't even tell you how life changing. Sure. This year, I had so Annie's in another stage. She's pre um, adolescent and mm -hmm. start to go through puberty, and that's a whole other yes. ball game. And yeah, mm -hmm. and very scary for me. Um, so. You know, I, I was able to talk to some doctors and psychiatrists here that I would never ever have. Mm -hmm. You know, had access to. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. And the things that I'm learning about comorbidities and um, other things that can go on at the same time and things to watch for. I mean, mm -hmm. there are many things other than just adolescence or possible seizures or ticks or I mean, there's so many things to consider for what she's going through now. So mm -hmm. it's been a great conference in opening my eyes. To me. Good, good, good. I'm glad that you're getting some very real and very meaningful information that will um, improve the quality of your life. That's wonderful. Yeah, it really will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Stephen, did you have anything to add to to what Amy just shared? Well, I think it's uh, uh, Autism Speaks has provided a great venue mm -hmm. in, in which people, uh, all parts of the autism community, and including those of us on the autism spectrum, can share our experiences mm -hmm. and insights. So that we can help parents and everybody else in the autism community uh, assist those with autism to lead fulfilling mm -hmm. and productive lives to our greatest potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wonder. I'm, I, I think it's wonderful that uh, that they have had this event that you're participating in, and it seems as though everyone has had a really um, um, meaningful time, and that has they, they've really gotten a lot of. And not only that, camaraderie too is really yeah, evident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's very important. That's very just as important as, as the intellectual and the, the knowledge base. Not that that's not important, but just a feeling of, of being connected and that you're, you're in the company of people who understand what your day to day life is, is a very, very important thing. And I've gotten to know Stephen better, who's going to help me yes. with the position issues. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Much yeah. Much I'm not going to pick his brain for it. Cool stuff. Okay, did we have anything else we wanted to share, Stephen? Uh, well, I think it's great that autism mm -hmm. 
continuing to increase their involvement of individuals on the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's people uh, uh, working within the company, um, uh, such as uh, Carrie Magro, mm -hmm. uh, working in the New York office and in the area of promotion and advertisement, I believe it is, whether mm -hmm. it's Valerie Paradis, uh, right, right. who Autism Speaks uh, provided a grant money for uh, last year for a program of hers, and I guess uh, me as well, as being their opening keynote yes. uh, for their national conference. And uh, as Amy just said, uh, that is huge. It's huge for parents too. So many parents were so happy to meet Stephen. I can't even tell you. Oh yeah, the just the hope factor. The hope yeah. factor. Yeah. Absolutely, we all say that. <laughs> right, right. Stephen is Stephen is just he's just he's unique. He is there is no one else like Stephen. But there are an awful lot of advocates who are on the spectrum, and they're becoming more and more visible, as you were saying, Stephen. So. That's right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But and we all have hopes for our Stevens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Successful people on the spectrum there are all over. Are well, all over. As I said during my keynote, I think we have the knowledge, we have the ability, we have the techniques, we have the technology. So that mm -hmm. if we get the right resources to meet the needs of individuals on the autism spectrum, people with autism leading fulfilling and productive lives can become the rule rather than the exception. Absolutely. I think that's a beautiful place to end. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, everyone there who participated. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, everyone who's watching Autism Brainstorm. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.